In Natural History Museum's tank room, where shelves are filled with animals preserved in jars of clear spirit, three experts open up a large stainless steel tank and take out a specimen. One of them speaks to the camera from an office. On screen text reads, Richard Sabin, Curator of Marine Mammals, Natural History Museum. Today we're letting two scientists open up the head of a minke whale. It's been in formaldehyde for almost 100 years and it's quite a rare specimen. We're going to take a look for an earplug, a plug of waxy material that forms in the ear canal. They contain lots of really useful information about the animal's life. It's laid down year by year so we can use them in the same way that you'd section through a, a tree and count tree rings. Earplugs are going to sit right about here. We're going to have to cut some tissue, but this is very preserved. It's going to be tough to get through this. Remove some of this external tissues and, and see where we're at. We have an opportunity here to not just take samples from um, earplugs, but also to look at muscle tissue and baleen. The importance of these tissues is that they actually have information about the animal's life history. With advances in analytical techniques, we can now, now get so much more information out of them. OK, that's good. One of the scientists points at the whale's mouth. On screen text reads, Dr. Stephen Trumbull, marine biologist, Baylor University, Texas. So these are the baleen plates on a minke whale. And what we're trying to do is get the mouth open enough to get up underneath the gum line so we can get a full sample of the baleen. Dr. Trumbull pulls out a piece of baleen. Yep. That's coming. There it is. There we go. Footage of a minke whale gliding through blue water, then a marina filled with industrial shipping vessels. Minke whales, like other species, have been affected by the generation of um, anthropogenic noise and um, pollutants. All of these things in combination cause stresses and they cause contaminants and other types of chemicals to be laid down in the tissues of the animal's body and it's those tissues that we're interested in examining. This specimen that we have from 1926 existed at a point in time before these large scale stresses actually existed in the wild. <laughs> Earplugs are really difficult to extract because they sit within the ear canal and there's no external opening. To get to them, you have to work around the back of the skull, find the tympanic bulla, actually remove the tympanic bulla that sits at the end of the ear canal and contains the other smaller bones. Once you've removed that, you find the glove finger process and hopefully you find an earplug. A diagram showing the earplug's location, then Dr. Trumbull soaring into the preserved whale skull. Some of the bone's really easy to cut through and the muscle isn't. So we'll see if we can find a plug. This is how the glove finger laid in the canal and the wax should have protruded and been excreted from it to fill this, this chamber here, but we have the finger and the chamber, but I don't see a lot of evidence of a plug. Not necessarily surprising based on the age uh, of the individual, and so not all individuals have plugs, but at least we can have uh, comfort knowing that we've got the other tissues, the muscle and the baleen we can take back to lab and uh, do chemical analysis on those. Museum collections every few years go through a kind of a renaissance as these techniques develop and we can extract more really useful information from them. It's great to think that our collection, which is well over 100 years old, is contributing to science still in the 21st century. Over a photograph of a minke whale underwater, a narrow semi-opaque navy blue rectangle appears on the left-hand side on which the credits are displayed. Film Hannah Wise, Sarah Wheel, Archive Footage Shutterstock, Tony Wu, NaturalPL.com, Music Audio Network. On the right hand side is the Natural History Museum logo, consisting of the words Natural History Museum displayed in a column flanked by a large letter N on the left. Text at the bottom reads Copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum, London.